When 3D printing was first invented, people said that 3D printing would revolutionize the manufacturing industry. But who would have predicted that it would have also revolutionized a whole different field? It's the medical field! So in the last few decades, researchers and scientists have been developing a type of 3D printing technology that could print biological structures like tissues. And we call this type of 3D printing bioprinting. And in 2015, scientists developed a revolutionary 3D bioprinting technology that would bump up bioprinting to a whole another level. And we called it embedding 3D printing. And yes, it was fresh. Hey guys, it's Yaleem. And in the last few decades, months, <laughs> just kidding, I've been building a 3D bioprinter called the Fresh Bioprinter from scratch. And it was an amazing learning opportunity. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you guys about how I did it. Let's get started. First off, what is a 3D printer? 3D printers are machines that deposit material layer by layer into the 3D that structure that we want. And 3D printers get instructions from a series of commands written in the language called G-code. 3D printers are consisted of three main parts the extruder, the control system, and the controller board. So first, the extruder is like a piping bag that deposits this material, and it also controls when and how this material is deposited. Second, the control system is a series of motors and belts that move this extruder around along a print path to um, enable the shape that we want. And third, the controller board is the brain of the 3D printer. So it basically takes in information from the .g code and translate it into information about precisely how each part of the printer is supposed to move to make the desired structure. Okay, so what makes 3D bioprinters so special? Well, bioprinters are 3D printers that can deposit a type of material called a bioink. A bioink is a mixture of cells and hydrogel and this makes bioprinters really good at handling soft and fragile materials. The printer that I was building called the Fresh Bioprinter is a type of extrusion-based printer, but it's special in that it deposits print material into a tank of granular support material made out of hydrogel. And this support bath um, locks the deposited bioink in place so that it cures without deforming or flowing after that has been deposited. And this makes fresh bioprinting much more accurate and speedy than conventional bioprinters. To build this bioprinter, I use instructions from these two papers. Essentially, you're modifying an FDM printer into a bioprinter. And an FDM printer is basically a 3D printer that melts plastic material before depositing it. But since in bioprinting, we're dealing with cells and hydrogels, we don't really want to heat them up to and that kill the cells. Um, so this is why we're replacing the FDM extruder for a syringe-based extruder and the controller board from the original FDM printer to a DO2 Wi-Fi, which I'll go into later. But first of all, how does a fresh extruder actually work? It consists of five main components, the syringe, the carriage, the lead screw, the stepper motor, and the core. The syringe serves two main roles. First, to store the bioink, and second, to deposit it using a plunger. And this plunger is moved by a system consisting of the carriage, lead screw, and the stepper motor. The syringe plunger is directly connected to the carriage, which is threaded by a linear motion shaft, which is a long metal screw. And this long metal screw moves up and down relative to the carriage as it rotates. And this rotational movement of the linear motion shaft is driven by a stepper motor. So to summarize, the syringe plunger is connected to this carriage, which transfers the linear motion of the linear motion shaft driven by the stepper motor into the up and down motion of the syringe plunger, which in turn extrudes and retracts the print material. All of these parts that I just described were fit into a scaffold part called the core, which combines all the parts into one extruder. And all the parts that I used were 3D printed from an FD printer, except metal components like the linear motion shaft, the screws, and nuts. Now onto the controller board. 
So fresh printers use a special type of controller board called a DIY2 Wi-Fi, which allows your computer to talk to your FDM printer without any physical connections because you're doing it over the Wi-Fi. And to do this, I first wired up my printer to my DIY2 Wi-Fi board. And in this process, I made sure not to connect any wires connected to the heater or the cooling fan of the printer because we're not actually using any heating features for bioprinting. I also connected my DIY2 Wi-Fi board to an LCD touchscreen called the Panel Do, which allows me to directly interact with my printer without needing a computer. And then I connected my controller board over to my Wi-Fi using a terminal emulator program called YAT. Essentially, YAT yeah, allowed my controller board to connect to my Wi-Fi by giving me an IP address, which is like a link that I could just type into my web browser to get a web interface directly with my computer that would look exactly like what I would see on my LCD touchscreen, but it's on my web browser. So I could just control my printer um, from any digital device that has my web browser. Although building this bio printer would have sounded kind of simple, it actually involved a lot of effort and figuring things out. So first of all, I had to learn a lot of things like how to work with screws and nuts, how to use soldering irons and circuits, and how to print parts with FDM printers, and also really understanding how a 3D printer works. I was also facing challenges like removing support material from all my parts, troubleshooting with connecting my controller board to my Wi-Fi, and also just some parts not fitting in perfectly. More than anything though, building this bio printer was an exciting opportunity for me because I got to personally interact with a cutting edge bio printing technology. And right now I'm super hyped for all I could do using my fresh bio printer, including building a scaffold for growing meat tissue in cellular agriculture and making soft robots with my bio printer, which I'm super excited about and trying to figure out how to do right now. If you're interested in building a bioprinter yourself, feel free to check this article that I linked down below. And overall, I hope you found this video super helpful and see you in my next one. Bye!